Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is a sharpshooting seven-year NBA veteran now in his first season with the Los Angeles Lakers. He was recently given the nickname Layup from his new teammate, LeBron James. Troy Daniels, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, Layup, where'd that come from? Uh, LeBron, um, that's, that's my nickname with him. So he basically, we were working out in Vegas and, um, you know, I didn't miss at all. And he said, so I see, you know, when, when you shoot the ball, we're going to have to get back on defense. And I said, yeah, pretty much. So he's like, so your nickname's Layup, so. Did you ever think you would see the day when LeBron was giving you your nickname? No, it's almost like a dream come true. Uh, one of my favorite players growing up, so um, he gave me a nickname and I'm going to run with it. It kind of makes sense because Frank Vogel said recently that you are arguably the best shooter on the team. Mm -hmm. And that means even better than Danny Green. For sure. Oh, I was going to ask, do you agree with that? I do. For sure? Yes. And would Danny be okay with you saying that? I would hope he would, you know, challenge me and say, hey, no, that's not true. And, you know, maybe we can have a contest. We'll see. So um, that's my confidence level as a shooter. You have to have that. Oh, really? no shame? No shame. So you're, you'll always take the ball? Always? Oh, yeah. Why not? That's my job. What if you're, what if you're on a cold streak? You still want the ball? I, I don't remember being on cold streak, so. Oh, you were only hot? Only hot. All right, I like that. Speaking of which, you, um, you tweeted out mm -hmm. that you would win the NBA three-point contest. Mm -hmm. You haven't participated in one yet. Right. Do you want to just put that out there into the universe right now that they need to invite you? No question. No question. I think, you know, I, I won a college uh, three-point contest years ago, um, and I honestly think in this NBA I can win a three-point contest for sure. Well, we're going to start the campaign there you right go. here on Let's this show. Uh, this summer, you were the first free agent to sign with the Lakers. Mm -hmm. Rob Palenka called you. Mm -hmm. Anthony Davis even called you, right? Mm -hmm. What do you say to you? Uh, both of those guys called me, and obviously at that time we thought we were going to get Kawhi Leonard and um, basically say, hey, we have a chance to win a championship. We would like you to be a part of it. And AD remembered some of the games we played together um, or against each other, and, you know, I've had really good games. So um, he was just saying, hey, this is, this is the year we'd like to be a part of it. And to me, that's a no-brainer. I said, whatever you guys need from me, let me know, and there we go. Okay, now let's bring this back a second, because okay. I noticed you said the, at the time you thought you guys were going to get Kawhi. For sure, yeah. Why for sure? Um, I mean, that's, you know, they, we had LeBron, obviously, and just got AD, and it was a no-brainer for Kawhi to go to L.A., to the Lakers. I mean, I, I thought so as an NBA player, and um, but he chose the Clippers. So. Why don't you think he chose the Lakers then? I have no idea. So you heard rumblings. Because you know, you guys talk to each other, so you mm -hmm. heard rumblings that he was going to be a Laker. Yeah, I mean, if I was Kawhi, I would have went to the Lakers. But um, Really? Yeah. Why? Just, What's wrong with the Clippers? Nothing wrong with the Clippers at all. Um, I just think, you know, it's more appealing, you know, it's in your career and whatever. Uh, to go to the Los Angeles Lakers, they have a lot of history. But, you know, if you're the guy that wants to put a team on a map, that's the team to go to. Um, it's still early in the season, mm -hmm. so chemistry takes a little while, right? For sure, yeah. But you guys have something I think that's pretty unique with a group text with all of the Lakers on it? Yes, yes. Every single Laker player? Every single Laker player. Does every single player participate in the group text? Yes, yes. Who participates the most? Hmm. Probably LeBron. Really? Probably. I think he's one of the guys that started, him or Kuz. Um, but LeBron's he's really engaged in the in the chat. So. What is the last text he sent in the group text? Um I can't remember. I think it was something funny. Uh something that was on Twitter. You can do you have your phone? You can just No, I don't I don't have it oh, on okay. me. Um I, I can't I really can't remember. But it was something funny on Twitter I remember and we were just laughing, so So is it mostly like jokes or are you talking about the game or are you uh, it's, where are you going to meet up that night? So we lost the game, obviously the Clippers game, and literally a couple hours later, you know, LeBron saying, gave us a message, basically saying, fellas, it's, you know, it's one game. Um, just be ready to practice tomorrow, and, you know, we'll, we'll keep moving forward. Appreciate you guys. So, you know, stuff like that. It can get serious at times, and sometimes it can be fun. So. Does every guy respond to that then? Yeah. I mean, I would hope so. Oh, you have to? No, you don't have to, but, I mean. You, what did you, you say? I just gave the thumbs up on the on the message. <laughs> you go with the emoji. There you go. It's the I hate thing. the double tap. That's the I really thing do. To do. I know, but the, the, I'm not a fan of the double tap. <laughs> Who's the funniest in the group text? The funniest in the group text, maybe Jared Deli. I want to say. Really? Maybe, yeah, he. Jared, not he, Javale. 
JaVale too. I mean, those guys are characters. I mean, they're fun. Right. Man. They're funny, but... Um, What's Rondo's text like? He doesn't really engage much. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. He yeah. seems like the double tapper. He does, but he's really, he's a real character in real life. Yeah, I know. It's funny. I used to work for the Celtics when he was there. Yeah, he's funny. And then Avery. Yeah, that's my guy. Avery's your guy? That's my guy. Okay. Do other teams have this kind of group text like that? Um, I've played on about five or six teams, and this is my second team that's, that's had it. I can't really uh, ex go with other teams or what they do. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the last group text I had was with the Charlotte Hornets. So it's a rare thing as far as you know or you might guess. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah. I think it's cool. Yeah. You mentioned the game against the Clippers. It's pretty clear the Lakers and Clippers, there's this rivalry, especially right. now because the Clippers are really good. Mm -hmm. How much trash talking went on in that game? You don't want to know. I do. I want to know everything. <laughs> um, it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, but you could feel the energy in the arena mm -hmm. with the fans, um, the coaches, the players. I mean, everything was, you know, it was times 10. And you lose a lot of energy in the game when you do that. You know, when you feel the adrenaline pumping and stuff like that, it takes a lot of energy out of, out of yourself. True. Um, and we're just looking forward to the next game. Oh, will you t uh, trash talk less then? No, obviously your game has to speak for itself and trash talk is just trash talk at the end of the day. So um, we're just really looking forward to, to playing them again and we'll be ready. What's the worst trash talk thing you heard in that game? The worst? Um, I didn't really hear anything that bad. I mean, everything was just basketball oriented. I mean, I've heard some Obviously, things that Patrick of, Beverly says. There's a lot of curse words going into yeah. it. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, you could have tough skin. Are you a trash talker? Every now and then. Every now and then. What's the worst thing you ever said? Oh, I might have talked about somebody's mom or something like that. Someone's mom? <laughs> no way. I'm just. That's off limits, I feel like. That's <laughs> like very, Gilbert Arena style. Very right well there. off limits. Very well off limits. Okay. I don't know. Um, okay. But you try to figure out, you know, certain stuff to get under people's skin and this and that. Oh, you do research? No, 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 no. It's not that serious. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just out there trying to make shots. So, okay. Yeah. I heard that the Lakers uh, canceled a practice recently to have a genius talk, and it was David Blaine. David Blaine. What did you learn from David Blaine? He's very good in his craft. At magic. At magic. I'm not sure some of the stuff he did was magic. It was just he's very superhuman-like. Oh. So, yeah, he's, I was impressed. Like what? One of the acts, he, um, it was a card trick. Um, Rondo was participating. Of course. Um, only thing, I, I don't know exactly what he did, but the only thing I know is the card ended up being under his Apple Watch. I don't know how it got there or what, who was in on it or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, but, you know, um, the card was there. Uh, so Frank Vogel is a player's coach? For sure. Yeah. Yes, yes. You guys have a lot of personalities on that team. Oh, yeah. What is it that he does to manage all of those? Um, I think he, 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 he talks to you, you know, a lot of like coaches. Like one-on-one? Yeah, one-on-one. -on -one. He'll come up to you, have a conversation, see how you feel that day, and, um, how, you know, do you want, I mean, not obviously do you want to practice, but, you know, if you, if you feel like you're hurt or whatever, just, you know, take some time and sit out or, you know, do another drill, this and that. And you want that as a coach. You want somebody to care about you. And, you know, um, even if you do have superstars on the team, you want them to be able to, one through 15, be able to uh, interact with you. And I think he does that very well. You said that you chose the Lakers because you want to win a championship. Yes. Why will this team win a championship? I think we have the best um, team from from one through 15. You know, we have guys that have been through all kinds of stuff. We have guys that won championships. We have guys that um, they're middle class guys, I call them, like me, myself, gear seven, um, that's been around a while, that's played with other superstars, can, you know, give my two cents in the locker room if I need to. Um, and then we have really good young guys. Um, and then you have your two superstars that you can, you can play through. And with Rondo playing the point, obviously he's a very smart player. Um, I think we have the right combination of guys, so. Do you feel like personally for you to consider your career a success, you have to win a championship? I do. I do. Um, because at the end of the day, you want to, to be the best, you have to beat the best. And um, all the greats won championships. Most of the greats won championships. And um, I think that's how people remember you. Okay. More with Trey Daniels when we come back. Check out 
our YouTube channel, Fair Game on FS1, to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.